So, uh, Will and I met uh, a couple of years ago out here at the site. He was on Dan Smith's tour, one of our archaeologists. And we started talking about uh, geographic information systems and mapping in archaeology. And got really interested in, in having a collaborative effort between uh, uh, where he works at the Department of Transportation in Kentucky and the University of Kentucky folks doing uh, ground penetrating radar and maybe some, some uh, magnetometer survey. So they've graciously uh, taken off their work time vacation and driven nine hours all the way here to Jamestown to give us some ground penetrating radar and, and magnetometer. And it, it's, it's a phenomenal scientific practice and it's something that, that uh, is always developing. So this is a exciting combination of modern technology with understanding the past and Jamestown is a uh, incredible site that that excellent work needs to be done and you are doing that and this is a new tool in the toolbox to help you plan and see and understand what's underneath the grass so that you can uh, preserve and describe the history. Carl Shields, who was going to be part of the team who couldn't make it, was uh, very important in helping put this collaborative effort together. He was uh, coordinating on the Kentucky side of it, uh, had a lot of constructive discussions about LIDAR, archaeology, remote sensing, and we were able to bring some of these technologies here. Uh, my specialty is uh Geoinformatics, where we use uh, things like GIS and geophysical technologies to try to learn about the past. And, you know, Jamestown here is one of those sites that everybody uh, reads about uh, in the popular press and in, in journals. And, and, and uh, when I had an opportunity to, to come here and use my expertise in geophysical survey to help provide some information, it was something I jumped at right away. So what we're kind of doing is using um, a couple of techniques, uh, principally ground penetrating radar, uh, but also uh, magnetic radiometer, which I'll let uh, Dr. George Carruthers talk a little bit about. Uh, but the, the GPR is something that allows us to kind of create a 3D picture of below the surface. So, you know, it's kind of like a CAT scan. We just run this machine that looks like a lawnmower uh, over the, uh, over the site, uh, we do it very systematically. Uh, we're actually doing it about every 50 centimeters, or we're doing it every 50 centimeters. All right, so it's possible the type of things we're looking for are storage pits, um, foundations. Uh, what the radar does as it goes into the ground is it just reflects continuously off differences. So you're looking at variations down there. So there may be things like um, soil differences where somebody may have compacted a floor from continuously using it, even if it's a, a dirt floor. Um, you may have foundations, you may have post holes, things where the soil texture may be different because we've dug it out and filled it back in. Um, things that um, are uh, some sort of different building material like stones or uh, bricks or, or things like that. Um, we can find those. We've only processed a very small amount of data. Uh, out there in that very first, uh, one of the first grids we had where there was a burned tree stump, we knew we'd have an anomaly there and we found one, but it looks like it's not your typical tree where you would have roots. It actually looks like it could potentially be a shaft that goes down, maybe a potential well. I'm Dr. Stephen McBride with the University of Kentucky and Camp Nelson Civil War Park. My role with the crew is primarily to move tapes. So we keep the uh, machines in line and keep them on a grid. Uh, and when we do hit anomalies, uh, we can put them on a map very precisely. I got uh, brought onto this project through Carl Shields um, and Will Holmes. They were, when they were interested in doing some survey, um, they were gonna uh, concentrate on uh, the ground penetrating radar, but uh, they asked if I would come along and also use the, uh, our magnetometer, which is just another um, instrument that can measure um, different properties of the, of, the, of the ground, near surface. What it measures is near surface magnetic fields. So if you have um, variations in that magnetic field from features, pits, walls, structures, uh, obviously metal, ferrous metal causes a large magnetic um, uh, field. 
It will, it detects those. And it, the type of instrument we have is called a flux gate gradiometer. And what that means is it's, it's basically two sensors. Um, and they're stacked on top of each other at a, a distance. And so one gradiometer, one magnetometer is measuring uh, the background field. And the second one is measuring the changes detecting the changes in the near surface magnetic strength because the earth has a has a magnetic field overall magnetic field and you want to zero that out and so it's just a way to get a quick um, measurement of the near surface magnetic field without having to process that background field out it's very common it's probably the common most common instrument used in archaeological uh, geophysics because it it can detect it's rapid to uh, to collect and um, a lots of signatures, lots of archaeological features or have a distinct magnetic signature. So we use that as a um, very, very quick method to um, measure uh, properties of the ground. And then along with the ground penetrating radar, it's always nice to have two different uh, instruments because they're gonna detect slightly different types of features. And so then you can compare, compare the two. So how we decided on areas is that our current excavation site, which is just north of us right now, uh, we're, we're seeing post holes that extend out of the site. Uh, that, so that was a natural sort of direction to go. Uh, so initially, well, uh, the first day we started Sunday, it was raining in the morning. So we, we went ahead and surveyed in the church behind us here. That's going to be the focus of archaeology as we move towards 2019, the anniversary of democracy here at Jamestown. So that was a really neat, neat process of doing indoor ground penetrating radar. Uh, the, the skies cleared. The next day we moved to north of the site. We went east of the churchyard and uh, now we're just kind of looking at a couple other spots. But uh, uh, stay tuned. We are, we'll be uh, looking at some really great data, I think.